Live from the WHIT Radio Studios at High Tech High School in North Bergen, New Jersey, it's Wake Up Hudson County with your host, Sam the Man, Mo the Machine, Ratchet Richie, and special guest, the Iron Chest himself, Wally! All right, I'm Sam the Man. That's Mo the Machine, Ratchet hey. Richie, hmm. and the Iron Chest. Uh, let's get down to discussing today's current events. This is uh, Wake Up Hudson County. All right, so today it was announced, uh, and a video was released by the Navy showing them sh uh, firing missiles and bombs on parts of Iraq and Syria controlled by ISIS. Do you think that this is the right thing for them to do? Yes. Again, I don't think we should always be the world's policeman like we went over before. However, we need to take charge when, you know, nothing else yeah. is working. And this is the best way possible, in my opinion, because we're not putting troops yeah. out there. You know what I mean? So we're not really losing yeah. lives here. So, But we I, are losing lives, just not, we're not our losing citizens. our our lives. You know, we got to focus on our people first. You know, it sounds cruel, but that's the way it's got to go. It's sad, Mohammed, because I agree with you. But after watching videos and hearing I know, man, I know. from what other people did, well, I mean, for what's going on over there, and seeing the egregious acts these guys are committing, it's it's sad that, you know, I I don't know how to feel anymore after seeing like the things I saw. Like, there's like people are losing their mothers or children. No, trust me, I know what you're talking about. I went over it's to Palestine this summer. I got to see a lot of things, yeah. but now I I don't know how I'm I'm with Richie. I don't know how to. Uh, feel about the bombings because I mean in one sense it's the right thing to do because we're not putting our own troops in harm's way and we're trying we're attempting to uh, stop an evil from spreading but on the other hand we're killing innocent lives we're taking yeah, away innocent the, lives the too the bombs don't have the intelligence to know who to kill and who not to kill it's there's just, no difference it between just, a soldier yeah, and a baby it is just kills so that's that's on the other hand you're going to get more innocent lives innocent people dying from you know, from bombs, but, you know, I think that, I think, you know, definitely no troops on the ground, but a uh, point I want to bring up, I, I personally believe that this is the right thing to do, but do you believe that the way the UN and the way America kind of sets up the world right now uh, leaves it to not have growth and creation of new countries and new governments? I think the UN should use more. I think if we used, I think if we use the UN and we talked more about topics like this and we contacted instead of acting more we could avoid i'm telling you i think the u.n is honestly doing all that it can but well, at the I end of the day I when was the last I'm, time you heard i'm, that I'm you telling you i'm telling you right now news. i'm telling you right now after going back to palestine team. i saw the u.n try their butt off and nothing worked I, so they are doing what they can it's just not working out my question is I, not if the u.n is doing what they can my question is throughout history we've seen empires rise and fall we've seen countries and people take over, create new governments. You're do right. you think with the UN and the way countries are sort of set in stone, do you think that that's the right thing to do? Do you think that it's kind of, you know, it's uh, hard to say limiting, you know, the way humans, the way we interact, and like the way governments have power over the people? Because it seems to me like it's almost we always side with the government and not with the people. Because in in my I know ISIS, you know, this isn't like. A revolution more as just like an invasion, but I mean, still, I see what you're saying. I think it, in too many cases we side with the governments the, and try and keep the borders the way they are. So you're saying we should? Is it right to interfere with? with yeah, with, I, with, with what, different what revolutions. human wants to do. Sometimes yeah. human wants to dominate. Sometimes humans want to. Yeah, I mean, throughout history, you see empires rise and fall, and yes. that's because it's not set in stone. Because you know they're given this ability to to revolt or to invade other countries. This you know, and I think that with the UN and the way the United States is sort of the world police, we are limiting the ability for, you know, that to happen. Okay, with uh, this whole thing. Now, the UN was made to pretty much prevent a, a another world, possible yes, world war. Definitely. But what you're saying right now, how th countries are pretty much set in stone, I feel like that itself can actually cause another world war, which I, th I think is what you're trying to say. I don't know if it's going to cause a world war. I'm, I'm, just, saying I'm just wondering if if it's the right thing to do to not allow people to sort of, 
create mm-hmm. their own governments and yeah. not allow governments to try and you it's, know go to war with each other. It's, it's, it's almost it's like, not a hundred percent right, if, but you can't just let people become their own their own country. You know what I mean? It's too yeah. hectic. It's too like with Scott, I think with Scott Lowe, when we talked about it's tricky it. because my, if we do the whole question. we don't we don't we ha- we set things in stone. We don't let people. We don't let citizens with bad governments. Give the oppo- have but the, the reason they have a bad government is because they haven't had the chance to go out and do things. They're always a part of a country instead of, you know. Yeah, but at the yeah. same time, we weren't all that successful as a nation. The uh, US yeah, I mean, when we started if you think off. about it, if the UN was created at the time of the American Revolution, we probably wouldn't be here. We'd probably still be Britain. See, yeah, but, but at I the same time, if we I, I not having accent. things set in stone, is also a catalyst for a world war. Not a, not a catalyst for a world war. It would encourage more shifting of borders and more, you know, it more be too war. Hectic. And it that makes other countries mad. In no, turn, but see, I, I don't think that. I don't think that in. I don't think it, it encourages a world war. I think maybe I don't think you can make an argument that uh, world war is caused by not having set in stone boundaries. No, no. I mean, because you look, the UN was there when we almost went into a massive world war, and I think maybe I think you could pretty much argue the cold war was sort of a world war people were taking sides either you were with the communist uh you're with the communist government or you're with the capitalist government but it didn't get to the extent that i mean we fought a couple wars because of it i mean i've we fought vietnam because of it we fought korea yeah. because of it yeah uh, the way governments are ran but i think ultimately what well, ultimately what my question is asking is we all understand that war is an evil yes but, but unfortunately, it, that's but how economy it, thrives. Um, but is it a necessary evil for human growth and uh, for yes. for change yes. and for yes. the spreading of ideas? If it wasn't for wars, we wouldn't be we wouldn't be where we are right now. We that's wouldn't true. have anything that we have right. Like France wouldn't be the way it is. The U.S. We would, there wouldn't even be a U.S. right now yeah. if it wasn't for war. So, I yeah. I think it's unfortunately necessary. And the sad truth is, our economy thrives while we're in war. Well, I mean, so. we could. There could be ways for our economy not to thrive. Yeah, I know. We absolutely. could do certain things, you know. Not, you know. We could change. Uh, I don't even want to get into it. There's a whole bunch of stuff we could do. Yeah. Uh, on a lighter subject, let's go to the weather. Okay. Hi, Hudson County. How are you doing today? The weather. All right. Today we're looking at pretty decent weather. It's going to be in the high 60s, low 70s all day. Wednesday, we're looking at a high of 73, a low of 61. Mm-hmm. Uh, Thursday, we're looking at a low, a high of 64, a low of 57. Mm-hmm. Friday, Pretty high chilly. of 77. Yeah, what about your sweaters? Then it then should be hot. 80 by the weekend, right? Yeah, actually, Sam. Saturday and Sunday, we have highs of 81 and 82, lows of 59 and 61. What about the suntan lotion? <laughs> Is there any chance of precipitation in there, Mahal? No, no. It looks like uh, clear, sunny days. How about Beautiful. Snow. Just amazing. Let's and, uh, hope that you are clairvoyant when it comes to the weather. Monday, we have high 70. It's going to be 79, actually, partially cloudy. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, low 70s, and we're looking at light rain. So, you know, let's hope that he's clairvoyant. And while clairvoyancy is a gift, hindsight is twenty twenty. What could the Jets can, have done differently? I can predict the future. Jets, uh, I think what they really showed yesterday is how weak their secondary is. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely because... I mean, they shut down Marshall. They, I think it's more of an example of how weak their linebacking core is because to, st- to stick a tight end, that's really what it comes down yeah. to. Yeah, and Martin Mathos Bennett had two touchdowns yesterday. Yeah. He was the only one with touchdowns yesterday. Yeah, as receiver. Yeah, exactly. Even though Austin Jeffrey also did have... Uh, what was it? He went 105 yards at reception. 105 yards, yep. Yeah, I mean, that's... So, yeah. But what I think the, the, the Bears showed on their side of the ball is that they have... They're savage... I think they they're one of the, the most stacked offenses in, in the league right, right now. Weapons I all over have the weapons place. everywhere. If even you know, without Brandon Marshall, who I think is going to more receivers. Seeing him pull oh, up some yeah. nice catches like that, even the third string receiver like that, that was pretty nice. I think what they really need is to cut ties with Cutler. I can teach them how to do that. Well, hmm. okay. this to me, this is the last year as a Bears fan. For, first of all, if, I'm, if, I'm, if I was a Bears fan, I would be not. done giving Jay Cutler chances. I mean, you know, but that comes down to that's happening all over the place. I mean, we're giving e- the Giants giving Eli Manning chances, the Cowboys, Cowboys Tony, Tony Romo. Romo, you know, Bears with uh, Jay Cutler, Jay Cutler, the Packers giving Rodgers a million chances. But you, even you though guys he's gotta bad. remember. Oh, that's different because Aaron Rodgers <laughs> won a Super Bowl. I'm yeah. joking. Aaron okay. Rodgers is a good quarterback. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> but, the uh, thing about Jay Cutler is he's just coming off a bad injury right, mm-hmm. right now last year, and he's coming back into the offense again, learning it up again. But last week you wouldn't have been saying that like about how he, you want to get rid of him. You saw him last week against the 49ers. Yeah, I, mean, I did see him against the 49ers. However, I have been saying this since day one. You Every time something really Jay good Cutler, or really bad, I call Jay this from the start. Jay has the Tony Romo so, gene well, funny, in him. What's no. funny, he can give bad. you. He can give. So why doesn't he just buy a pair of new jeans, Rich? No, 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 no. Let me finish. He can get. Jay Cutler can give you three hundred and fifty yards. That's a blast. Three touchdowns, twenty-five for forty. But you know what? Don't say he has Tony Romo gene. When you really need him to finish the game strong, what does he do? Interception. Are you sure? Fumbles the ball. You can. Are you sure that's not the Peyton Manning gene? The Peyton Manning gene. Peyton Manning, who's won a Super Bowl. Peyton Manning, who's top who's three won, who's quarterback won of all for time. Th- who's won for three in the Super Bowl. It's won for three in the Super Bowl, but the fact that he got to the Super Bowl he's he, won is for a three. milestone He's not itself. a postseason quarterback. He's a regular season that's quarterback. That's what I'm and trying that's to say. I mean, Jay Cutler, that's fail. the main fault of Jay Cutler as well. He's not a postseason quarterback. That's also true. Well, that's why also why he's not a league quarterback. But, you know, as what I would do if I were the Bears is I would, you know, next year you're going to have a host of good quarterbacks to pick from. Uh, coming draft out of, a QB. Draft a QB. And you know what's the good part about uh, next year's draft in terms of quarterback? They're not going to need to start. Nobody's going to have any pressure on them to start. Yeah. So, uh, you know, a, a bunch of them. I can't the trust. Oregon State guy, he's not going to want to start right away. Uh, the Stanford guy, he's Marcus not. Marcus Mariota? No, Oregon. That's Oregon. Oregon, Oregon, Oregon. State is, I forget his name. He's not going to, I mean, he's going to want to start. But, you know, there's not going to be too much pressure for him to start so they could develop and learn the offense. And, you know. Hopefully it takes off. From I that. can't stress how much, how well the Packers did when they drafted Aaron Rodgers. Not, With Brett Favre not necessarily still there. early, not necessarily late in Brett Favre's career, but not to the point where Brett Favre was already deteriorating. I think they drafted him at the perfect it's time. Perfect. They gave Aaron Rodgers time to yeah. learn the offense and yeah. learn under Brett Favre, one of the greatest quarterbacks in our. Well, in you our know, there was history. not that much for Brett Favre to teach him. Uh he, he just, I mean, Brett Favre is well, famous Aaron for just Rogers, throwing it up there. Aaron Rodgers I mean, did say himself that he owes a lot of credit to Brett yeah, Favre. Yeah, definitely. For teaching him. I mean, teaching yeah. him the ropes and so teaching guess, him uh, how to be. So I guess transitive property owes me a lot of credit because I taught Brett a lot. You're welcome, Rich. I kind of, like, you know, in, like not directly. I delivered that Super Bowl ring to you. You're welcome. Okay. So enough with the uh, fantasies. Continue. Yeah. Realities. But I mean, so you're comparing Jay Cutler to Brett Favre right I'm now? not comparing Jay Cutler to Brett Favre. I'm comparing the situation that the Bears can put themselves in. And even though Jay Cutler is not only quarterback, he's still a good quarterback. He's still a good quarterback. He's and a good you, quarterback, and he can teach. If you draft one, he, they can work under him. He can, and he can go good. under Jay Cutler. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he could. I don't know if the quarterback would want to learn under Jay Cutler. I don't think that. I think that you would give him time to develop under the coaches, not so much under Jay Cutler, because I feel like Jay Cutler wouldn't teach him much. Under the assumption that he would be a threat to Cutler's spot. I mean, hey, at the end of the day, if you draft the QB, QB is not going to start, and they're going to have time to learn the offense. They're going to have time yeah. to learn how to play in the NFL. See, but the difference between Jay Cutler and Brett Favre is that Brett Favre knew he was going to start. Yeah. Brett Favre knew that it was his well, spot no matter what, and Jay Cutler doesn't really. I mean, well, depending on Jay if, if Jay Cutler continues how he does for the rest of the season. He's definitely going to start next season, and probably the next season after that. Yeah, but it's still up for grabs. People. Up. People didn't talk about Brett Favre as his spot being up for grabs. People t- talk about Jay Cutler as his spot up yeah. for grabs. So if I'm Jay Cutler and they draft a younger quarterback, that's a sign for me that they want me out. I'm not going to help out that younger quarterback. And I think that's what's going to happen. Well, that's, that's, that's now we're questioning. Well, that depends if he wants now to win or not. His leader, like now his, we're questioning him and his personality, his leadership oh, I mean, like, Do you want to win or do you want to be the man? Cause yeah. Well, you know, as and soon that as, we as really don't know. the team will win under the other quarterback by the time Jay Cutler's gone. They, so it's not a question of whether you want to win or whether you want to do this or that. Jay Cutler will be gone by the time the other quarterback's ready. Unless the quarterback takes Jay Cutler's spot. But I don't think that Jay Cutler's going to be inclined to teach him that much. He's not necessarily just inclined. Like, I'm just saying if Jay Cutler's willing just like Sanchez, to take you think this Sanchez new quarterback to take the backseat uh, roles, what you're take saying. Him to take the backseat. To take the backseat. If, if you he's think Alex willing. Smith wanted to teach Colin Kaepernick? What happened? You think Alex Smith? Uh, well, no, Alex Smith is a young quarterback, and I, I still think, and I'm still saying, the 49ers are going to regret getting rid of Alex Smith. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know about that. I think but working s- alongside of them is enough, though. Like a rookie coming along and working yeah, in the same. I think it's a bonus. Every day. I think it's a bonus if 
if this new QB that if Chicago decides to draft a quarterback in an upcoming draft and that went yeah. next May, it's a bonus if Jay Cutler is willing to take this new quarterback under his wing. It would be, but I, I don't know if he's going to want to do it. But no, I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, it's really just up in the it, air because we really yeah. don't know what Jay Cutler. I don't know. Feels. I couldn't call him up on the phone, so. Me either. All and right. I, want to I could. I'm a Packers fan. That's you could. I, okay. That's I'm, call him up I'm Sam the, the Man. That's Mohammed the Machine, hey. Ratchet Richie, oh. and the Iron Chest. This has been Wake Up Hudson County. Good night. Good night. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Good night.